Hello, and welcome to the Empowered Couples Podcast, where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you face. I am one of your hosts, Jocelyn Freeman, and Aaron Freeman isn't going to be joining today. However, you're going to love this topic, and he is actually going to speak to the challenges that men are facing next week. So let's really talk about this. You know, we wanted to really separate these episodes, not because anybody could be feeling the things that I'm going to be addressing today, but because it's interesting to just hear what are women going through versus what are men going through in relationships. And we're grateful that we get to do so many sessions with couples and get to hear it. And be able to create the space where couples can share that. And so don't worry, men, you're not going to be left out. Next week, we'll be covering the challenges that they are facing. But wanted to go into this in two episodes because we are entering the fall season. And we have done this so many years now that we can really see these cycles that happen throughout the year. And truly, historically, we have seen that in these fall months leading up to the new year, There is either the opportunity to become strengthened as a couple or strained. And we really do see that. We do see some couples end the year feeling like, okay, this isn't great. Nothing changed. We're not as connected. We're not working through these challenges. And they start off the year that way. And then there's almost this like panic to like work through it. It's a new year. And so we want you to even start to think about the quote unquote end of the year now in terms of within the relationship, what is there to work through, process through, improve, upgrade, right? Not just waiting for the new year. And again, this has been a time where some couples do end up being more strained, but you're listening to this episode. And so really we have the opportunity to focus on becoming stronger. Now, before I go into these three challenges, I want to say this at the very beginning. If you at all are stuck with something in your partnership, you have listened to our episodes, you have read our book, you have, you know, read our posts online, and there's still a challenge. I want to just invite you lovingly, but boldly to stop waiting to book a session with us. We are so grateful that we do this day in and day out and see the relief that couples feel after the sessions. Now, sometimes are they, you know, harder conversations, of course, but we guide them to be constructive. So, I wanted to say this at the very beginning because we're going to be talking about challenges that if you are stuck in something, you have tried, you've read the books, you've read the posts, all the things, then book a session. So you can actually go to meetthefreemans.com slash coaching. We only do have a few spots each month. Uh, We have a baby girl, as you know, and already work with a large book of clients. And so take advantage of booking a session with us. And now with that said, Let's dive into these challenges, okay? The first one is hearing from many women that they feel that when they go to give some kind of feedback, even if it is positive, you know, the positive intention or it's their input or it's their idea of, hey, here's how you could do this better or hey, here's a solution for this. They feel that they are being met with defensiveness and dismissiveness, So what this could look like is she wants to bring up an idea about how money could be managed, about how a project around the house could be done differently, about how an interaction with the children could be going better. Or, hey, you know what? Hey, this thing you're dealing with in your family, here's some input on this. And they feel that their partner immediately snaps back and they don't feel a receptiveness coming from their partner. So again, anyone could feel this, but again, just hearing this from many women. And personally, I know what this one feels like, and Erin would attest to this. This is one where we ongoingly have to pay attention to how we give feedback and how we receive it. I know that sometimes when, as human beings, we receive feedback, especially from our partner, it can be... Gosh, it almost like activates this insecurity within us. You know, I mean, especially if growing up, we didn't receive a lot of feedback. And so we're maybe not as used to it. 
or we didn't really see that given constructively, it can kind of trigger that little inner child inside of us that is like, oh my gosh, did I do something wrong? And they're correcting me. And then also sometimes it's not the inner child. Sometimes it's the ego, <laughs> to, to be honest, right? Sometimes the ego inside of us uh, that just wants to be right is like, don't even tell me where I'm not doing it right. And so we can have these unconscious responses and reactions. Now, I know for the women, you know, receiving this defensiveness and dismissiveness, it can feel hurtful because I know that when I have tried to share those things with Aaron and I do receive that defensiveness back, I'm like, man, but I think my idea is pretty good, you know, or, Hey, I think my input is, is worthwhile to consider what the heck, why can't I be this partner that you want to hear my input from, you know, and that's ultimately what we want. And I know that a lot of women happen to be pretty assertive, not all, but I was actually talking with a friend yesterday and I said, look, I get it. I'm an assertive woman and I know you are as well. We have to just really look at our delivery, right? So the tip I want to give you is outside of the moment where you'd want to give feedback. So don't do it in the middle of giving them feedback. Outside separately, when you're just having a conversation about, it could be anything, you're on a family walk, you're doing the dishes, like just a a neutral time where you're not giving them feedback is ask them if there is a better way that you can share your ideas, your input, your feedback in a way that could be received. And so that's a really great way to just, you know, it might sound something like, hey, I noticed that sometimes maybe it's my delivery or when I bring it up, you know, if I share my input, my ideas, my feedback about something that you're, you know, we're working on, I don't feel like you like that, you know, and so I'm wondering how could I do it differently so that I can share my ideas and my input. And see that tone, the way I'm putting it, it feels neutral. It feels curious. So that's really what I want to offer to you. Now, this isn't going to be an episode where I'm speaking to the partner on this side, right? If it happens to be a male partner, I'm not going to be trying to give you feedback right now on how you can receive this differently. I want to focus on the women. What can we do? You know, the challenges we're facing and a tip for us. Now, of course, there would be a worthwhile conversation to explore with your partner if there is a bigger, deeper reason that they are defensive. And, you know, again, that's something that we can support you with in a guided conversation in a session with us, but that's something you'd want to ultimately explore is perhaps there's deeper reasons that they don't feel they receive that feedback well. But let's move on to the second challenge that women are dealing with in marriage right now. And that is feeling like there's never a good time to bring up certain topics. So kind of funny to follow the first one, right? Because it's not only about just giving each other feedback, but it's you want to bring up something in the relationship. Hey, I want to talk about our relationship. I know that's a big one that women can feel is like, I never feel like there's a good time to bring up our relationship. It's either you're going to work, I'm going to work, or it's something with the kids, or now it's bedtime. And you're like, when can I bring it up? Then the weekends, this is another big thing. Well, the weekends, we just want to have a good time or it's already filled with, you know, kids, sports and having to run errands and then birthday parties. And so we don't want to bring it up then because we already have so much to do. And it feels like there's never a good time to bring up these topics, regardless of what it happens to be about. So I get it. It can be very frustrating. And as you've heard us in many episodes, the longer that you wait to discuss something, the more it can build into resentment. And resentment is not a fun thing to feel and it's not as easy to work through as it is just having, you know, a day of a challenging conversation. And you probably have seen some of our posts recently where we talk about how it's so much more constructive to bring things up when they are small seeds rather than big weeds, right? When it's a small seed, it is kind of the beginning stage of feeling something And rather than waiting till it's a big weed, which is, I mean, you know, have you pulled weeds? I certainly have. It's like they're really entrenched in the ground and you pull them up and they're hard, they're resistant and they spread, right? They grow. And that's what it can feel like when you wait to bring things up. And so 
if you continue to feel like I can never bring this up, I can never bring this up, of course, it's only going to build into resentment or just all of a sudden it gets so bottled up that you bring it up at not a great time and it just gets to be this huge blowout conversation. So the tip I want to offer you is to request a family meeting, right? Rather than kind of going to them and being like, we need to talk, right? Or I have been wanting to bring up this topic for so long and it's never a good time is to try and go to them with, again, paying attention to our energy. Hey, I'd love to have a family meeting. You know, can we this weekend, can we in the next couple days have coffee together? Can we go on a walk? I'd like to just talk through some things that I know we don't have a lot of time to discuss during the week. We're both busy with work and the kids and I know that we're tired at the end of the day. So, hey, could we go on a walk tomorrow or could we go get coffee and hire a sitter, you know, on Saturday morning? And requesting that family meeting, again, feels constructive, right? Especially anyone who works in a work environment, you have meetings, right? You have team meetings. Well, this is a family meeting. It's constructive. I also recommend not only pre-scheduling it, so unless they happen to be in a great mood or great position, not being like, can we have a family meeting right now? Maybe, maybe once in a blue moon, that is right. But a lot of times it's going to be planning ahead in the next few days or week. I also recommend, and this can be very, very helpful, trying to have it in a neutral territory. So outside of the environment, sometimes our home can almost be either the place we really want to relax or it can be triggering, you know, because it's like the environment where sometimes we're stressed, we're in the kitchen, where the kids are around and, oh my gosh, I got to clean that up. And so going to a neutral environment can be really helpful. So Aaron and I have gone to hotel lobbies because we're like, it's got a great energy and we don't have any like bad memories in the space. So, you know, we can go to hotel lobbies or go on a walk. We've gone to parks and we've gone on the, you know, little winding trail around. And what's really nice is when you can actually be side by side, this has actually been studied, that people feel much more neutral and on the same page if they they're side by side walking forward together as opposed to being kind of across from each other, which can feel a little bit more confrontational. So that's just a pro tip there. Always great when you can kind of be walking and moving and side by side. But I recommend having this family meeting in a neutral environment. So that's the tip for this second challenge that women are dealing with in marriage. So far, we've covered feeling like their feedback, even if it's constructive, is met with defensiveness or the partner just being kind of dismissive of it. The second one being that they feel it's never a good time to bring up topics, right? It's like, I I don't have the space to ever bring this up. Now, the third challenge that we are hearing is feeling like their partner isn't doing the same level of quote unquote work on themselves and they're not showing up their best. So this can sound like, You know, I feel like I'm reading the books and I'm listening to the podcast and I'm working on my tone and the way I bring things up and it doesn't seem like you're working on anything. You're not changing anything. You're not reading any books. You're not listening to marriage podcasts and you're you're more defensive with me and it feels like you're not doing any of the work. And so that is something that we hear quite often. Again, and it's not always the case, sure. Can men sometimes do more work than women? Of course. But again, this is just what we're hearing right now. So this challenge, sure, in in a certain season, it may be that one partner is being a bit more vigilant with doing the work, whether that is listening to podcasts or reading the books or, you know, hiring coaches. And so, sure, there can be seasons where it does feel like one person is more focused on that. However, if it feels like that over a longer period of time, it can feel like an imbalance and it can feel like, why do I have to always kind of take one for the team and I always have to be the one working on it? And so, of course, we would advocate that as a couple, you are pursuing growth. I mean, you've heard us even on recent episodes say that work on ourselves as individuals and as a couple is so mission critical to staying connected, to working through challenges. You don't all of a sudden reach this arrival point where you just got it figured out and you can kind of take your foot off the gas and you don't have to work on anything. 
relationships and actually all of life takes that. I mean, think about any even career. I like to draw parallels to things. If you wanted to be the best architect, let's say, and you were like, but I'm not going to read any books on architecture. I'm not going to look at the newest magazines and trends. And no, I'm not going to go to any architecture conferences. Would you stay up to speed? Would you continue to be like a sought after architect? No, probably not. You'd get stale. You would get bored. You would be boring to people. You'd be, you know, become more irrelevant. And so why do some people think that you can not do the work in a marriage or on yourself? We need to always be, I'm not saying you need to sit there for hours a day and be like working on yourself like you're this broken person. I'm just saying we have to be intentional in life and in our day-to-day moments, we have the opportunity to just find little times that we can work on ourselves and hey, oh, you know what? I haven't been as kind to my partner. Let me work on that. You know what? We have been more reactive and it's been starting arguments. Okay, let's work on that. It takes ongoing work as human beings. That's just a fact. So I hope that's pretty clear. Now, if you are feeling this, feeling like your partner isn't doing the same level of work and you feel like they're not showing up their best, here's the tip I want to offer you. Meet them with compassion and curiosity. I know that's frustrating. You're like, what the heck? If they're not showing up their best and they're not doing the work, why would I show up with compassion and curiosity? Now, I'm not saying be a doormat, you know, and get stepped over forever and you need to just do this forever and ever and they don't have their part. No, that's not what I'm saying. However, what I've been finding in these conversations, because one of the cool things about with the clients who work with us on an ongoing basis, a lot of times for three or six months, I'll find, you know, that I'll talk to the women and Aaron likes to talk to the men a lot of times on the phone in between sessions. Anyway, I have been finding that women are not meeting their partners with as much compassion. And even like Aaron, I think I shared this with you guys on an episode recently. He's been going through a hard time with this challenge that we've had going on with this real estate investment. It has taken so much of his time. It was way beyond the threshold of security that he wanted to invest because this person totally dropped the ball on us and did not follow through. And he's been going through a hard time, even today. Talk to him on the phone because he's out there and he is not showing up his best and he's been a bit shorter with me. And one thing I just want to say I'm a little proud of myself is I am consciously choosing to meet him with compassion. Instead of meeting reactively back to him and being like, come on, and and, and kind of just forcing him to work through this, I am being curious and I'm being compassionate and I'm just holding space for this challenging moment that he is going through. And sure, are there things that I could invite him into to work on? Yes, but I'm picking a later time to bring those things up. Right now isn't the time. He already has a lot on his plate. I am going to offer some insight after this is all complete. Hey, I noticed that when you're stressed, this and this and this, but I don't need to bring that up right now. And sometimes it is a timing factor for our partners. And I I find that when I meet him with compassion and with curiosity, he softens and he even catches himself in whatever state he's in. Like I haven't even had to be like, hey, by the way, you're being kind of short and cranky and, you know, not your best self. He has actually said to me, hey, I know he's called me back actually now that I'm thinking about it just a few minutes later and has said, hey, I realized like I know I was short just then. So he is observing himself. I don't even have to bring it up to him a lot of times. I'm just meeting him with that compassion, with curiosity. And you know what? As partners, don't we need that sometimes? We don't always need our partner to point out the ways that we could be better. You know, and I know that sounds contrary to sometimes the advice we give, but again, there's a time and a place for many things. And if our partner's already going through something, and I was sharing with a female client just a few days ago, hey, your partner has a lot going on. And I listed this, 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 and this. What do you think it would look like to meet them with compassion right now? And they're like, yeah, I haven't been doing that actually. And so again, I'm not saying be a doormat forever. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's just an opportunity. If our partner isn't showing up their best and they're not doing the work, what could it look like to meet them with that compassion? 
What does curiosity provide for them? How can you ask them better questions? How can you, I even said to Aaron today, hey, what do you need right now? Because he was really stressed and really, again, kind of short. And I said, what do you need? So curiosity, compassion, I mean, it's just, it's always helpful. So those are the three challenges that women are dealing with in marriage right now. Are there more? Of course, we work with a lot of couples. We hear a lot of challenges. If you saw the notes we have, it's like, I feel like every week we could have a new book because we just get so much juicy insight into what people are dealing with. However, these are three big ones and common ones right now. And if you can relate to any, number one, that means you're not alone. You're never alone in the challenges that you face. I know it might feel very personal to you, but you're not. And I hope that even the small tips that I gave you for each one offer you a different way that you could handle it. Uh, Is there something they could do on their side? Of course, but we're not talking to how your partner could do things differently right now. I'm just offering something small that you can do if you resonate with one of those challenges. Now, with that said, Don't stay stuck. Please, again, going into the fall season, you can get strengthened or strained. Do not end the year more strained. Don't wait. Don't put it off until it is so strong that what you're going through. So please go to meetthefreemans.com slash coaching and book a session with us. September is a great month. We are just kind of working through the final couples that we'll be able to work through this year. And so book a session. Try it out. It's a low investment, the first one, and people really feel a lot of momentum even in that first session with us. So I can't wait to meet all of you. I hope that this was just an opportunity to feel connected to people and feel like you're not alone, but I am here for you. We are here for you. Aaron is going to be covering the challenges that men are facing next week, which I think you're going to find very interesting and insightful because it's, it's cool that men really open up to us and, and we're grateful for that because we know that sometimes that can be hard as well. So you'll be interested to hear what men are going through as well. But with that, we love you all. We're here for you and we can't wait to talk to you on the next episode. 